Hello, and welcome to The Perfect Song, the Gen Explainers podcast. Um, today, we're going to be looking at a song by the Rolling Stones, and it is Gimme Shelter. Um, and presenting it to us is Alan, who right now his background looks like he has a hat on. Ah, but it's Mick. It's not Alan. All right. It's sorry. Sorry, podcast listeners. You can't see that. <laughs> anyway, so Alan's going to talk about Gimme Shelter by the Rolling Stones. Alan, take it away. Uh, yeah. So Gimme Shelter is by the Rolling Stones. And that is all the research I've done. Okay. No, uh, Let's vote. <laughs> It uh, was recorded in 1969 by the uh, traditional Rolling Stones writing duo of Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. It was inspired initially by a monsoon type rainstorm in London. and uh, Keith Richards just saw people running for shelter. So that was the uh, initial inspiration for it it is kind of trotted out whenever there are natu uh, natural disasters but of course it's also about the, uh, the atmosphere of the times the the feeling of impending doom in the world there was the vietnam war and there was a lot of crisis in society especially in western society as um, you know the baby boomers were making their their presence and their feelings known to the world uh, riots deaths assassinations so it, it, it it's also a metaphor for that um, very famously when it was recorded uh, i don't remember the name of the guitar that keith richards recorded it with but uh, he had used that same guitar for their recording of midnight rambler and then very famously when they the second he was done finishing the guitar part for Gimme Shelter, the guitar fell apart, literally <laughs> you know, broke into pieces uh, at the end of uh, recording that song. That's how hard he was shredding, man. Sorry. Totally, totally <clears throat> shredding. Um, and that guitar part, I think, is important. The Part of the atmospheric feeling of the, sound, of the song comes from... Uh, uh, the guitar, I don't know what kind of pedals or effects were put on it, but it has this kind of eerie feeling of something coming on. And I think that later combined with Mick Jagger's harmonica work Mm. Are, those are the hallmarks of of that song to me musically uh, another hallmark of course is the backup singer mary richards i believe clayton. it is mary clayton. Oh, mary clayton mary clayton who's uh phoned up uh, in the middle of the night asked to come down and, and record uh the song with mick jagger And uh, it's a fantastic vocal performance, uh, especially in, in, in the middle where she's just sing shouting, you know, rape, murder, and uh, very tragically, of course, she, she was pregnant. And later, after the recording, like the next morning, or perhaps even during the night, she miscarried. Um, yeah. And some people have attributed it to the exertion that she into this particular track um, but it's a fantastic vocal per performance mm -hmm. and you can even hear supposedly she breaks during one of the uh -huh. you know, when she's screaming out rape and murder and you can hear Mick Jagger in the background go woo yeah he goes woo it's just a shadow it's just a shadow rape murder So that's the introduction. All right. Yeah. Um, well, I'll just quickly chime in and say, yeah, it that vocal performance, to me, that's, well, all the elements you mentioned make it the great song, but that one is just really defines it for me. 
that's what I think of. Uh, tragic backstory aside, I think she's it's just yeah. great. Um, yeah, you, like you said, it, it's, it starts out just this sort of dark, ominous, apocalyptic. Uh, it leads up to this apocalyptic song of just like world ending or something. Um, and yeah, guitar is great. Just uh, again, it's one of these things. It's great, you know. Uh, yeah, you yeah. mentioned most of the stuff I was going to mention. It's just, it's just really fantastic. Yeah, and and I I agree with all of that. Um, the urgency of the song is what really sticks out to me. Is like how it, it, there's a there's this emotional urgency about like this. Well, I can't really say much different than what you guys are the apocalyptic feeling of it, and like how it resonates so much with not only the time but also just how the world keeps on uh putting more and more uh pressure on each of us <laughs> it, it just you you want you want to break from it and the, the the song doesn't let you have that break it just keeps on pushing and pushing and pushing so i just i, I like that aspect of it actually <laughs> So, yeah, it feels uh, relentless in its. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it's relentless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> well, and I don't. The, know. Huh? Oh, I was just gonna say that I also like that just the, the juxtaposition of, you know, on the one hand it's war, it's just a shot away, but at the end it's also love, it's just a kiss away, and it does give that feeling of like being on a precipice and we don't know which way we're going. Right. Yeah. There's like, there is redemption there. It's just, yeah, we're, we're on the edge of it. We can go either way. Yeah. That's really good. Good stuff. We hope you're enjoying this Gen Explainers podcast. Remember to find us and follow us on social media. Give us a like, a follow, or support us on Patreon. And we'd much appreciate a five-star rating on the podcast platform of your choice. Now let's get back to the show. So uh, let's go ahead and vote on this thing. Um, Al, what do you think? Is this a perfect song? I think this is a perfect song. I think the the moodiness, the atmosphere, the storm coming on. Um, I didn't actually mention this before, but part of the darkness of the of the song is that the Keith Richards' wife, Anita Pallenberg, was like doing stuff with Mick Jagger, like they were shooting a film or something, and he was kind of like, "What the? Why is my wife spending so much time with Mick Jagger?" <laughs> but like that darkness, that moodiness uh, comes through throughout, and it just. It, it does feel like a storm. I've asked that question many times. What is my wife <laughs> spending so much time? Mick Jagger. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I, I'll go next and I'll say uh, absolutely. Uh, this is one of the songs I first thought of when I thought of the idea of a perfect song. I This is my favorite Rolling Stone song, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just, it is perfect. It's a perfect song. Turkey time. No, oh, turkey time, folks. Turkey time. Yes, it is. Um, and um, for all the reasons you guys said, um, and I'm going to just leave it at that. Uh, uh, right. I don't know. I don't know if it's my perfect uh, Rolling Stone song or I, I, my favorite Rolling Stone song. But yeah, I do think it's a perfect song. Excellent. And my, and my favorite's not Start Me Up. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. I was worried. <laughs> I was a little. I, I, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. There you have it. I, I uh, urge you to hear this, listen to this song if you haven't heard it before. I find that hard to believe, but maybe. Uh, no one listens to us but uh, uh, boomers, so I don't know what's going on here. You've heard it. Um, <laughs> I hope some uh, millennials and Zs and even maybe some uh, little alpha kids listen to it, listen to this podcast, and uh, yeah, make sure your little toddlers listen to that rape murder part. <laughs> 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 also, you know what? Someone should play this song for Martin Scorsese. I think he might enjoy using it. In yeah, films. he could use he could utilize it. I think. All right. Well, thanks, guys. 
Bye bye for now. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this Gen Explainers podcast. Follow us on Instagram and friend us on Facebook. Just search for Gen Explainers and find us on Patreon, where you can support the channel and gain access to extended cuts of the podcast as well as exclusive bonus content. See you next time.